So hello and welcome to You So You. My name's Zoe and this is my channel all about the crafty bits and pieces I get up to. I knit, I sew, I spin on a drop spindle, I dabble in weaving from time to time and anything else that takes my crafty fancy. But today we are looking at English paper piecing clamshells. So grab a brew, put your feet up and let's get started. Welcome back to any returning viewers and to any new viewers, a very warm welcome to you. As I mentioned at the opening to this video, we're looking at English paper piecing with clamshells today. Now, I've been doing a look, little uh, looking around since I did the last video on English paper piecing, which was dealing with hexagons, to work out how to do the clamshells. And I've come across two techniques. One is an applique based technique and the other one is a bit more like the paper piecing we were doing with the hexagon. So I'm going to show you both. Uh, but first of all, let's look at how I was covering my clamshells. I'll get the camera moved around and we'll take a look. Okay, so clamshells. They're a bit of an awkward shape and I've tried a few different methods of covering them. Um, first of all, I tried covering it on the back, much the same as I did with the hexagons, but that was really tricky and fiddly. Um, the paper moves and all sorts, I had to do it two or three times. So then with these ones, I've actually stitched through the paper. Now, I know what you're going to say, but Zoe, you didn't want to damage your papers by gluing them to it. Uh, I can see the pot argument for gluing with this particular type of shape because it's tricky and fiddly. Um, but with sewing the paper and the fabric together, yes, you're putting holes in your paper template, but you're not going to just rip the paper out and tear it. You're going to undo the tacking stitches before you remove the paper in any of these techniques, pretty much. Um, so, yeah, OK, you've got some holes in your bit of paper and yeah, OK, you're probably going to need to reprint them or cut them out again more frequently, but there's not the same risk of tearing them as there is with the glue. So, for the first uh, technique for clamshells that we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about the applique method. So for these, we're going to start by cover. I'm going to show you how I cover one of the templates to look like this. And then we're going to need a strip of fabric to use as a base. Um, but more on that in a bit. So we're going to take the wrong side of the paper and put the template on it. And I found that if I use a clip at the top and a clip on one of the sides, that that helps hold everything in place whilst I'm tacking on the fabric. So I'm going to put, I've got a knot in the end of my thread and I'm going to sew straight through the paper until that knot starts to resist. Then I like to work from the front of the piece. So I find I can see what's going on at the edge a little bit better that way. I'm just going to tack all the way around the curved part of the shape, trying to get as close to the edge of the paper as we can. So I'm going to go gradually around. Sometimes the stitches might be quite short to try and catch the uh, folds on the back. Sometimes they might be quite large. It doesn't matter too much. You're aiming for a fairly smooth curve around the outside. But you're only tacking down the curve for the applique method with the clamshells. So it doesn't take too long. Sometimes I'll do a little back stitch just to catch that little fold. I'm only doing that to control the fabric really whilst I'm working with it, uh, whilst I'm getting everything pieced together. So 
doesn't need to be wonderfully neat because like I say these stitches are coming out and I do realise that the thread I'm using is matching very closely to this fabric so you may not be able to see it brilliantly but I'm sure you get the general idea With this particular method of putting your clamshells together, you're going to need to know how many clamshells you need for the width of your project or the fabric that you're trying to produce. I'll show you why in just a moment. Okay, so we've got to the end of the curve. I like to have my thread at the back when I cut it off. And there we go. So I've got here five clamshells. So I'm going to put these three together in a row. And then these two will be a row. And they'll sit like that. But we're going to put them together in rows rather than in this configuration of five. So the way we're going to do that, putting a knot back in my thread. Now obviously if you're somebody who uses starter stitches to secure the ends of your thread, don't worry too much about the knots. So we're going to take two of our pieces, we're going to place them right sides together and we're looking for the corner of the paper piece. So we're going to go through the edges of the fabric at that corner of the paper piece and we're going to put about three or four stitches in that point and you're aiming to go just through the fabric not the paper if you can avoid it. There we go. So that's those two secured together. I'm going to do the same with the next piece. Right sides together. Lining up the corners of the papers as best you can. And I haven't knotted this time, so we'll see how that goes. And we are pretty much stitching on top of yourself, so it should really hold itself together. And you do the same thing with every row of clamshells that you need for the length of your piece. That's my first little row. Okay, so I've got my two rows stitched together and this is where our strip of fabric comes into place. So you can see I've ironed in a crease down the middle of this bit of fabric and that's quite crucial for this technique. Um, so this is the applique technique. You'll sometimes see it referred to on the YouTubes as uh, clamshells the easy way. So we're going to line up our clamshells against that crease. Uh, I'm unclear as to whether it's better to line the tops up along the crease or where you've stitched them together along the crease. So let's go with that for now. And I'm just going to, just looking where I've put my pins, because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pin them in place. I don't think that's crucial, but I find it easier with applique to have things secured in place rather than moving around all over the place. So obviously making sure that our reference points are all lined up the same. 
So we've got our corners of the, the paper piece on the crease and with this option. Now, in theory, this should keep your rows nice and straight. And once you've got them like this, what you're going to do is you're going to take your needle and thread and applique around the curves all the way across. So uh, let's have a go at that. So uh, I'm just going to secure my needle to this backing strip of fabric. I need my stitches rather to that backing bit of fabric. A couple of stitches over the top of themselves. And uh, I haven't done any plique for goodness knows how long, so um, we'll see how this turns out. So I'm going to take a bit of the backing fabric and a bit of the edge of the pieced fabric. I'm sure there's a proper stitch for doing this, but um, yeah. So I'm going to do this all the way around and I'll come back to you when I'm done. Okay, so I've uh, sewn on my first row. As I understand it, this would be the point where you would take out the papers from this row of clamshells. I'm not going to do that right now because I am undecided on which of the te two techniques I'm going to be using in the long run. Um, but once you've taken the papers out of this row, you would then take your next row and line it up like so and again applique on around the curves and keep going until you've got the length of fabric that you want. Now, yes it is a simple method, yes it is quite straightforward, it's quite easy to do. I don't know how traditional it is though. Uh, so if you're looking for the traditional style, we'll get to that in just a second. Um, the big issue I have with this particular method is you need to know how wide you want your end fabric to be before you can do your applique because you'll need to know how wide a, a strip to prepare. Uh, which is not a big issue, uh, it's just not very organic. Um, but yeah, it's a straightforward method. So that's the applique technique or the easy way. Um, I have seen somebody do it with the whole a whole square rectangle the size that they wanted their piece to be pretty much a fabric to, to stitch onto rather than just the strip. I've seen people do it with a, a strip that's basically half the width of the one that I've got here. Uh, I just didn't want to cut it down any further in case I decide not to use this technique because then I can use this fabric for more pieces. Um, so yeah, so that's the applique technique or the easy way. We'll move that to one side. The other method, which strikes me as being a bit more um, traditional, is a bit more like the hexes. I've had a go out here. This is much more fiddly, much more tricky to do, and I'm not 100% certain I've lined it up properly, but we'll find out in a minute. So we start off in much the same way. Uh, we're going to put the reverse of the fabric with the template on top, and I am just going to clip this out of the way. Now, I've when I saw this method being done, the templates that the lady was using came down to a point at the bottom, which will make this a little bit easier, but still quite fiddly, and you'll see why in a bit. So we're going to start off the same way, and stitched around the curve, uh, but starting just a little bit away from the beginning of the curve. You don't want to go right to the edge of the curve like you do in the other technique. Um, so maybe a quarter of an inch or so up from the corner of your fabric. So I'm going to make a start and get that sewn round to about a quarter of an inch away from the end of the, the curve. And uh, then we'll show you how we deal with this bit, because as you can see, we are stitching all the way around with this method. Okay, so I've sewn all the way around the curve till about a quarter of an inch-ish away from the, the corner of the paper piece over this side. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a pair of sharp scissors and I am going to snip into the excess of the fabric here almost up to 
but not quite up to the template. So just like when you're clipping seams, um, when you're dressmaking, the idea is just to make the fabric sit a little bit smoother over the curve, but you do want to be able to cover wrap around the edge of the template. You just sharpen these scissors. Okay, so I'm just doing one side at a time. I'm going to fold in this corner carefully and carry on tacking down. This is the point where I would be stitching from the back of the fabric so that I can see that I'm catching the fabric on this side. Whereas before I was going from the front to watch the curve forming. I don't think it matters from a curve point of view which side you stitch from, it's just personal preference. As I say, you're going to be removing this tacking anyway when you take the paper templates out. So now that we've got to the end of the paper template, or as far down as you can get if you've got one of the pointy templates, we're going to do the same on the other side. We're just going to hold this just the right way up. Um, snip into that seam allowance, make sure we've got a little bit between the edge of the snip and the paper template, because you do want to cover the edge of the paper. And again we're going to fold over and keep on tacking down our fabric. You do end up with this weird tab thing at the bottom, but apparently that will disappear once you've got all your pieces put together. Uh, I, I can't remember the name of the woman who I saw doing this method with the pointy template. She does sell the template on her website, so if I do remember um, who it was, I will put a name on the screen or in, link to it in the description box down below. But she was the only person I saw that wasn't gluing their fabric onto their templates she was sewing and she was sewing through the templates like I'm doing right now. Okay, there we go, I'm going to an extra stitch in here. Bring the thread back to the back just that it's out of the way when I'm sewing my pieces together. Okay, so now we have our piece with our little point on the bottom and we're going to attach it on here around the edge and we're dealing with curves so it does get a little bit fiddly to sew. So what we're going to do to begin with once I've put a knot in my thread is we're going to put right sides together so that we're about the centre point of the green one. Um, when I put the first clamshell on, first cream one, what I did was I folded my, t my green one in half so that I could see where that midway point was. So we're going to line up to the midway point and we're just going to put our pieces right side together. So we're putting the cream piece right side together with the green piece. And just like we did when we were putting our rows together in the other technique, the applique technique, or the easy way, uh, we're just going to stitch three stitches on top of each other through the fabric. Trying not to go through the paper. I mean, if you do go through the paper, it's not the end of the world, but try not to. Then we're going to flip out the cream piece and we're going to go to the back of the work. This will actually keep our stitches hidden apart from where we've done those first few stitches. They might show through slightly. So you do also want to make sure you're using a, a blending thread. And we're going to stitch through the edge of the fabric of both pieces from the back. You can see I've done it all the way around here. Uh, I am a little bit out of practice with hand sewing for this sort of type of thing. 
there, but with practice I expect my stitches to get a little bit neater. Um, so yes, a big plus of this method is the fact that your stitches are hidden. With the applique method, you are running the risk of your applique stitches showing through around the, the curves um, if you're not careful with your thread choice and the size of your stitches, so they need to be tiny. Um, whereas this method, because you're stitching through the back, the, so the fabric that's wrapped around to the back of the template, the stitches are going to be hidden for the most part. Um, so we'll see that's a plus. And obviously with both methods you are going to be pressing your pieces before you take your, your templates out. So there will be lots of pressing with the applique method to make sure those edges are crisp before you take the papers out and applique on the next row. Uh, whereas with this method, as with the hexagons, you can just press it once you've got all of your shapes put together before you take the papers out because you don't need to take the papers out until the end when you're piecing together this way. So it really is a question of which technique you prefer. Uh, which one's going to give you the result you want? Uh, which one's going to fit into the way you want to work the best? Right, from a neatness standpoint, for me, either technique is going to take a bit of practice, but that's okay. So I would do it on a scrap project to, to learn the English paper piecing, or at least why I do it on scrap projects to learn English paper piecing techniques, uh, because I'm going to be a little bit less precious about those. Yes, hello, Leo. Um, then on one where I've brought nice fabric. See, the cat's inspecting my work. Okay, so as we get to the end of the seam, we're going to secure the stitches, secure the thread by doing a few stitches on top of themselves, and then trim the thread off. I really need to do more hand stitching, it's quite relaxing. So there's what I'm going to refer to as the traditional technique. I don't think I've totally got them lined up correctly. I think that would have been easier if it was the pointy templates because the pointy bits were a bit longer. So I think I would have had a bit more room to, to play with. Um, I might have to try and get some of those templates. The way that you can make them is you can draw a circle and then put the same circle over the top of itself so you get the segments coming out of the middle. Um, hopefully I've explained that well enough. Um, so yeah, so that's the two techniques, traditional and applique. Let me know down below which one you would prefer to try out, or if you, if like me, you're a bit undecided. They both have pros and cons, and this one's a bit more organic. This one takes a little bit more forward thinking. This one's a bit fiddlier, and it's going to take a bit more practice. This one. You've got the, the backing fabric to support your first row, um, but once you take the papers out and you're putting your subsequent rows on, if you're using just a strip of fabric, you've maybe not got the same structural support. So yeah, swings and roundabouts. Um, this method is certainly easier for, for somebody without the experience to do than this method, but this method is more in line with the hexagons method. So yeah, let me know which one you, you think you're going to prefer and... Uh, I'll keep thinking about it and uh, let you know which one I end up using when I get my final uh, project put together. Um, but for the time being, I'm going to work on actually getting the, the clamshells stockpiled up. So I hope you found that useful and interesting. I aim to put a video out every weekend. Uh, once a month there's a roundup of the things I've been working on in the previous month. And in between times it's videos more like this where I delve into a project or a technique that I'm working on and show you how I'm going about it. So if you've enjoyed spending time in my company and would like to find out a bit more about what I get up to, by all means like and subscribe down below and ding that bell for notifications like all the YouTubers tell you. And I will see you in my next video. But until then, happy crafting and bye bye for now.